Good morning, Captain I'm Matt Hall. And I'm Aaron Miller. Today is Tuesday, February 2nd. Welcome to another live episode of WK Today. Let's start by taking a look at this week's weather. Thanks, Aaron. The unseasonably mild temperatures will continue to stick around for a few days. Today's high will be around 40 with some scattered sh rain showers, while tomorrow looks dry with highs in the mid-40s. By Thursday, a cold front will be moving through and bring severe weather with it. According to the latest models, we may get hit with some rain, while the East Coast may be hit with blizzard-like conditions again. Temps are back on the rise by Friday with high temps close to 40 degrees. That's all for weather. Now back to you guys at the news desk. The Flint water continues to be a leading story. In most recent events, there will be a new five-part strategy to determine if Flint's water is safe to drink. The testing will be done by Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. The strategy was pitched to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency yesterday, and they hope to know the quality of the system by mid-April. The 2016 election is underway. The uh, Iowa caucus took place yesterday. Republican Senator Ted Cruz won with a 27.7% of the vote and a 3% victory over Donald Trump. While on the Democratic side, it was much closer as former Secretary of State Hillary St Clinton won by just three-tenths of a percent over Senator Bernie Sanders. The caucus will take place in New Hampshire next week. In real news, the recent outbreak of the Zika virus has led to the World Health Organization to declare an international emergency. The virus has spread through mosquito bites and was first reported in Brazil last May, according to the Center for Disease Control. One of our very own WK Today crew members took a deeper look into AP classes and how they can benefit a student. I teach AP Literature and Composition for 12th graders. AP classes are like the freshman year college level class, so it allows students the opportunity to kind of see what a college curriculum would be like, and it also provides the opportunity to earn college credit if they pass the AP exam at the end of the year. Um, I teach AP Chemistry have for many years. Well, they are a college level class, so um, you could get credit from the college that you go to, um, or you just could have a very good understanding of the material and then your freshman class at wherever you go is a lot easier because you've already had everything. It's, it's more challenging, they're geared towards college bound students, um, they go faster, they are more in depth, and generally that is harder, yes. I teach AP Statistics. I think the difference between a normal class and an AP class is the pacing, how fast you go through chapters, how many tests you have, and the independent work that's required in order to pace yourself through the test and the note taking and the extra practice. I teach the uh, AP Portfolio class. The quality of the work that's expected and the amount of the work changes significantly. Um, and it's, it becomes more independent than in, in some of our other classes where like a drawing one is, is way more directed, like way more hands-on by me. Um, in a portfolio and an AP class, uh, it's more about individual work and me being there more as a guide, so to speak. My AP class is by instructor recommendation, so it'd be either myself or the other art teacher, Mrs. Groff, we, we have a conversation um, with them if the students interested, or sometimes we identify the students and we'll ask them if they're interested. Um, and, and that conversation happens because we feel that they're capable of handling the work and the workload. Otherwise, you know, we're very cautious about who we, who, who we let come into that class because of those things. As you can see, we offer many AP classes and they can help you once you get to college. Students Leading Students is looking for donations for new Crayola or Rosac crayons, color pencils, coloring books, word searches, ribbon or string beads, and other child-friendly activities to donate to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Donations can be dropped off in the main office or academic center, and they are due by February 22nd. Kettering is looking for a host family for one of our foreign exchange students who needs to find a new home for second semester. If you and your family are interested, please email Ms. Pansky or stop by and see her. Now let's toss it back to Ajay for sports. There's a lot happening in Kettering Sports today, so let's get right to it. First, the boys and girls ski team will compete in the slalom at Pine Knob, weather permitting. Next up is boys basketball team who will travel to Lakeland 
while the girls' basketball teams are home against Lakeland. Freshmen play at 4, JV at 5.30, and varsity at 7. Girls' gymnastics takes on Walls Lake Central beginning at 6.30. And in addition to all these great events, there will be a brief informational meeting for any girls wishing to participate on the girls' track and field team tomorrow, February 3rd, in the cafeteria starting at 2.30. Please see Coach Lydell in room 206 or Coach Cass in room 408 with any questions. And don't forget, if you are interested in becoming a caddy, please see Mrs. A. That's all for sports, now back to you at the news desk. If you have any questions with your schedule, please be sure to check the counselors ASAP. If you need a morning wake me up, the Spanish department is selling coffee and snacks in room 302 at 7 a.m. for the rest of the week. Be sure to stop by. That's all we have for you today. Once again, I'm Mel Hall. And I'm Aaron Miller Tam. Thanks for tuning in for today's episode of WK Today.